Hello everybody, Doug Daniel again from PilotsOnlineAcademy.com. This video is about how to land an airplane. I'm going to show you the safest and easiest way to land an airplane. This technique works in the most extreme circumstances that your airplane can land. This is a landing. I know it doesn't look like a landing. You see, we don't actually land airplanes. And that's an important secret. We put our airplanes in a pre-landing attitude at the right point over the runway and the proper airspeed. This is the proper pre-landing attitude for a crosswind blowing from the left. I'm about to show you how to get to the right point in space at the proper airspeed, attitude, and configuration. When you master these skills, you will have landings down cold. Guaranteed. Here is a landing approach with the airplanes drawn to scale. I'm going to make them bigger so they'll be easier for you to see. The wind blows from the left. If you point down the runway with your wings level, you will be blown off to the right. If you turn into the wind enough to stay over the runway, your wheels will be pointed in the wrong direction. When you touch down, you will be skidding sideways. The inherent stability of a nose wheel equipped airplane will partially point you down the runway, but with unnecessary wear to the landing gear. The inherent instability of a tail wheel equipped airplane will try to turn you around backwards, and you are in for a pretty exciting landing. In a stronger crosswind, even nose wheel airplanes demand proper technique. You might drive off the runway in the direction you're appointed, or Strike your wing tip on the ground. In a tailwheel equipped airplane, expect for your insurance premiums to go up. The solution is to cross control. I'm going to show you how. This is just one of the techniques you need to go through to get your final pre-landing state. I will go through them all in a minute, but first I want you to understand cross controlling. Our objective is to fly the airplane down the runway, centered over it, and aligned with it. You are going to do that by sliding sideways at the same speed through the air that the wind is trying to push you off the runway. First, you bank the airplane to the left. You can see from this diagram that lift is perpendicular to the wings. So when you bank the airplane, lift is now trying to pull you to the side as well as lift the airplane up. This will cause the airplane to start moving left. Unfortunately, the airplane has a vertical tail that resists sideways motion. It will swing the nose to the left too, and we don't want that. We want the wheels to be pointed in exactly the same direction we are traveling when we touch down. The rudder moves the nose right and left, so you push on the right rudder pedal with your right foot to point the airplane down the runway. If you have never flown an airplane, let me tell you that you push the right rudder pedal to turn the nose to the right, left rudder pedal to turn the nose to the left. Since the aileron and elevator are both controlled by hand, using either a stick or a wheel, you use your hand to keep the airplane banked into the wind enough to stay centered over the runway. I need to tell you that the reason I am so passionate about cross-controlling is quite simply because I was almost killed because I failed to cross-control. When I started teaching flying, I wasn't terribly confident, so I did pretty much what other instructors did. But you know, I was completely blown away when I discovered that they did not teach their students to cross control on every landing. It is not unusual for a student to become a licensed pilot before encountering a strong enough crosswind to require this technique. That's a recipe for disaster. That is why I use crosswind techniques on every landing, meaning that I force myself to cross control on every landing. Needless to say, I decided to teach my students what had worked for me. The amazing thing was that when I started teaching cross-controlling on every landing, my students mastered landings much more quickly, landing with much more authority and confidence. <laughs> I became a believer. You may be asking, well, why do you cross-control when there's no crosswind? Glad you ask. The answer is that without a crosswind, using the technique I described, you'll be flying wings level, centered, and pointed down the runway, just the way you'd like. You won't actually be cross-controlling, but it doesn't matter. You never had to decide whether to use crosswind techniques or not. Anything you can do to simplify flying is something you should do. Now, 
back to landings. Let me get you to that ideal state. We do this in three steps. The first step is the approach glide. This point we call short final. Your indicated airspeed will be whatever the flight manual tells you. The FAA recommends 1.3 times the stall speed and landing configuration if your manual doesn't say anything about that. Let me make a very important point here. If you want to master landings quickly, you should use exactly the same indicated airspeed on every approach. Your landing gear will be down. Your power very low or idle. Flaps full, mixture rich, and carburetor heat on. Your wings are level. You have not yet started to cross control. You are controlling your airspeed with pitch and staying over the extended center line of the runway. You have not yet started to lift your nose to get into the landing attitude. Now you cross control your airplane. Lower your left wing and push on the right rudder pedal. Focus on keeping the airplane pointed down the runway with rudder while you keep centered with ailerons and control airspeed with elevator. Here is some life-saving information. If you cannot cross control enough to stay centered and aligned, you just may not be able to make a safe crosswind landing. When you are about one wingspan above the runway, start using your elevator to control your rate of descent. Ignore airspeed. Get completely out of the airplane mentally. You are now entering the second phase of a landing, the transition from approach glide to slow flight over the runway. This is commonly known as the round off or the flare to land. Use the elevator much like you do the brake in a car as you approach a stop sign. The closer you get to the runway, the slower you descend. The trick here is to keep properly cross control as you descend. Stop your descent at about a foot above the runway. This is the final phase. Your elevator takes on a new role, but you continue to keep aligned with rudder and centered with ailerons. As you use your elevator to keep off the runway, keep flying at about a foot until one of two things happens. You stall and settle to the runway. This is called a full stall landing. Or your pitch attitude increases until it reaches the landing attitude. Once you are in the landing attitude, use the elevator to maintain that landing attitude. You will land shortly as the airplane continues to lose airspeed. In this video, you have learned the easiest way to land in conditions from dead calm to the strongest crosswind your airplane can handle. If you'd like to learn how to develop the skills needed to land an airplane the way this video describes, or learn what to do when things get out of kilter on a landing, and they always do, or if you're not a pilot and would like to get that life-transforming license, just go over to pilotsonlineacademy.com for some more free videos. I've covered a lot of material in this short period of time, and if you want a transcript of this video, you can get that too at pilotsonlineacademy.com. So thank you very much, and we'll talk again soon.